Let me tell you a story from last night. It was Christmas night. I started messaging with my flute teacher. It started off by wishing him Merry Christmas and all that, but then he let me know that his Christmas took a dark turn when his brother collapsed while they were all together with his family. When his brother found consciousness again, he felt he said that he couldn't feel parts of his body. There were no sensations. So my flute teacher thought maybe he's having a stroke. Anyways, long story short, they went to the hospital. They got a bunch of tests and it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with him which is good but that's not the point of the story while i was messaging with my flute teacher he sent me a performance while he performed in as part of an orchestra and while i was watching that video on my phone i noticed that there was a recommended video about a near-death experience which i've never gotten recommended on my previous youtube videos at all so i clicked on it and you know what the video is about it's about a woman who had a stroke on christmas day in 2021 and i thought oh my god my messaging with my flute teacher about a potential stroke on Christmas Day led to a video about a woman who had a stroke on Christmas Day a couple years ago. So yeah man, Google spying on us, not just Google. There was another time about a year ago after I talked with my mom about athletic, athletic Greens because she was telling me how she heard about it from Andrew Huberman and she's thinking of buying it. And when I opened my Instagram after that conversation, was the first time that I saw an ad for Athletics Greens on Instagram. So not only do they read your messages to target ads to you and videos, they also listen to you via the mic. There was a video on YouTube, but it had millions of views and it, talk it was a live stream about a guy testing using his microphone, which was not, no software was recording his microphone on his computer, but he just talked on his microphone into his desktop about dogs and how he loves dogs and about dog toys for about two minutes. And then before and after the ads had nothing to do with dogs. And after that talk, there were ads with dog toys and dog related stuff. First website up. Oh my God, it's right there. Holy shit. Everybody burn your microphones. So even if your mic is not being recorded using some kind of soft voice recording software, it's always listening to you and it is targeting ads based on what you say. Ads and videos. That is scary stuff, man. That is really scary stuff. I wasted a lot of time watching TV today. Well, I don't know if it was completely wasted, maybe time well wasted because I was enjoying myself for the most part, but I also forced myself to sit down and read so I had something to talk about as well. Oh, and before I get to the book, I got this um, tightened because I accidentally stretched this and it got loose. So I tightened it and she did it for free. Karen, who's really nice at Crystal Legend. She d even did the knot very well. She knotted this, which was difficult to do and it looks really nice. So she did a great job. The only problem is that because it's so tight, it sometimes um, clamps on down on my neck hair and it pulls on it and it hurts. So that's not good. Anyways, I digress and back to the book. I was reading The Practice by Seth Godin. Here are some passages from The Practice. The practice begins with trusting yourself to show up and do the work. Trust is a commitment to the practice. As we engage in the practice, we begin to trust the practice. Not that it will produce desired outcome each time, but simply that it's our best available option. Persistent and consistent effort over time can yield results. He didn't say will, but he said can. Writers write, runners run. Establish your identity by doing your work. Seth also has a daily blog and he said blog every day. It's easy, it's free. Although I chose to make a video every day instead of blogging. Even though I have my own blog and I feel like I should probably post more on the blog as well, but because I'm making these videos every single day, the blog is kind of left behind. Creative people create, do the work, become the artist. You can do it in private in a notebook that no one will ever see, but you will find so much more juice if you do it in public. I found this to be the case with my flute practice as well. As I said before, uh, when I first started practicing the flute again, I figured I'd just do it by myself in private. But when I decided to stream it, I found that there were people who were actually interested to watch me practice the flute and were encouraging me and having conversations with me 
throughout the flute stream. So yeah, I've definitely found this statement to be true, that you will find so much more juice if you do it in public. If you do something creative each day, you're now a creative person. And since I am creating videos every single day, I guess that makes me a creative person, right? The practice has nothing at all to do with being sure the work is going to be successful. That's a trap. Focusing on outcomes at the expense of process is a shortcut that will destroy your work. So don't focus on the outcome, focus on the process, because that's the only thing you have 100% control over. You are already enough. He's saying that even if you don't feel ready, you are worthy of having a voice. Do what you love is for amateurs. Love what you do is the mantra of professionals. Good processes repeated over time lead to good outcomes. We become what we do. You were born ready to make art. Art is something we get to do for other people. Those are some of the highlights of the book that I read so far. I'm liking parts of it, but like the ones that I highlighted, but also skipping a bunch of stories and stuff that I'm not so interested in. And that's something I realized about, there was a time not too long ago that I actually preferred audiobooks because I was too lazy to read. But then I found just recently, that I actually prefer reading books because I can skip the boring parts so quickly and I can highlight and reread the parts that I find insightful. I can't really do that with audiobooks because they pass so quickly and it's kind of a hassle to rewind. I also ordered a book, The Tao Te Ching. Tao, Tao Te Ching? Tao Te Ching? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a D or T. Tao Te Ching is how it's spelled, but when I hear people pronounce it, that's not what it is. That was recommended as well as another ancient text called the Bhagavad Gita. These are ancient Chinese and Indian texts that people find so insightful to the nature of reality and life. So I'm interested to see what they say. I'm especially looking forward to the Tao Te Ching. Anyways, I'm glad I got some reading done today, even after a big TV binge. Tomorrow I'm meeting friends, so that'll be most of my day. And the day after that, I'm it's my dad's birthday, so that'll be most of my day. So I don't know if I'll have much to talk about in the next two videos, but God damn it, I'm gonna make a video every single day. So I'll just probably recap my day and then end it. Tigger's been sleeping in between my legs while I've been on the couch. Now it's time to go to bed, Tigger. Let's sleep together again. <laughs> Anyways, at least I turned the day around and did one thing better to make the day 1% better. 1% better every day, baby.